Chapter 6, Medical Terminology, Anatomy, and Physiology of the Organ Systems. In this chapter, we're going to cover a brief overview of medical terminology. This HSC 112 covers medical terminology in greater detail. This chapter is going to relate that medical ter terminology and, excuse me, and determine how it is associated to phlebotomy. Okay, so medical terms consist of several parts, so the word root, the prefix, the suffix, and the combining vowels. As outlined here, the prefix is going to come before the root, and the suffix would come last. In this case, endocarditis, the prefix endo comes before the root, card, and then suffix would be itis, or inflammation. Where in phlebotomy, phleb is our root, o is our combining vowel, and tonomy is the suffix. In your medical terminology courses, or if you've taken medical terminology before, there is a distinct way that the term is broken down for us to be able to identify it. Basic rules for combining word elements. We're going to, changing a prefix can change the entire meaning of the word. So we want to use correct spelling, correct, correct and correct pronunci and pronunciation, and the combining vowel is often a null. There are several plurals. Please see tables 6162 and 63 in your textbook. Anatomy is the study of the human body's physical structure, where physiology is the study of the human body's function and processes. So we're going to just do an anatomy and physiology overview. Structural levels of the human body include the atoms, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and iron, molecules, chemical constitutes, and genes. Then we have our cells, and we have other small structures within the cells, and basic living units of all plants and animals. Structural level of human body, we have tissues, groups of similar cells. We have organs, two or more tissues, organ systems, groups of organs, and organism, which is the human body. Please see Table 6-5 in your textbook. Homeostasis is the steady state. Many complex processes work independently to achieve survival. Normal function, energy for body functioning, metabolism, anabolism, and catabolism, and assessed in many ways, vital signs, laboratory tests, etc. This goes into greater detail in Chapter 7. So vital signs include temperature, pulse rate, respiration rate, and blood pressure. See Table 6-6 in your textbook. So samples collected from patients, they can be collected with a swab, nasal or throat, wounds, vaginal or pap, eliminated naturally, which could be urine, stool, feces, sputum, semen, or saliva. We will be covering collection with a swab inside chapter 16. Specimen samples collected from patients, so there's Evasive procedures required for collection, so range from a finger stick, minimal invasive, to venipuncture, moderately to minor surgery, which would be a biopsy. All require special procedures, cleansing, sterilization, and proper training or certification. Invasive procedures required for collection and samples include venipuncture, capillary puncture, or arterial puncture, tissue biopsy, cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF, bone marrow, or other bodily fluids. Anatomical regions and positions, anterior or ventral is going to be the front where in the front of where posterior or toward the back or what's referred to as dorsal. And then there's medial, which is toward the midline. We need to be aware of the planes of the body or positions of the body, and sometimes our laboratory tests are affected by a patient's positioning. There's anatomical terms. So lateral is toward the side 
dorsal is the back side and ventral is the front side. I apologize if that slide wasn't presenting before. Anatomical terms, so proximal, near the point of attachment, distal or distant away from the point of attachment, superficial is near the surface of the body, and deep is far from the surface of the body. So for example, if a patient were to have an IV, we might indicate that the venipuncture needs to be distal to the IV or away from the point of the IV. And we talk about superficial veins because they appear near the surface of the body, where veins that are deep are tend to be deeper or far from the surface of the body. So body's positioning, normal anatomical position, is erect standing position, arms that rest, palms forward. Supine position, or lying face down on the back, is best position for performing phlebotomy on patients who are in bed, or if the patient has a history of fainting. Prone position, lying face down on the stomach. Lateral recumbent position, lying on the left or right side. So supine being on the back, prone being on the stomach, and lateral being on the side. We generally draw patients in inpatient setting, they are supine on their back with their head, with their head slightly elevated. So anatomical regions and positions. So clinical alert, please see table 6-8 in your textbook. When speaking with patients, refer to the patient's right and the patient's left sides. Do not confuse your own right and left side with the patient's right or left side. How we tell our students to judge this is it's opposite when we're facing our patient. So you can even turn your body around to remind yourself of what is the right or left side. The other thing that some students try to identify too is in most cultures, if the patient is married, their ring will be presented on the left hand. Not always though, so keep that in mind, but that's another way. 610 goes over the organ system's major functions in um, common laboratory tests. So please make sure to review that chart. So major organ systems, there's disorders, pathogenic condition or of the mind or body, the di disease, specific measurable condition, clinical symptoms, patient history, laboratory or radiological results, and then there's illness, subjective, non-measurable de departure from wellness, pain and suffering and distress. Please see table 6-9 in your textbook. The role of clinical laboratory in assessing bodily functions, we do screening, diagnosis, treatment, and monitoring health. So in the screening, we might decide to draw a patient for their cholesterol to screen their cholesterol levels. Based on those cholesterol levels, the physician would then be able to diagnose the patient if they have an abnormality with their cholesterol. They would then provide some type of treatment for the patient and then we would continue to monitor the health of the patient by drawing either um, every six month labs or yearly labs to follow up on the treatment that is being assessed, for example, for cholesterol. So the skin consists of hair, sweat, and oil glands, teeth, and fingernails. It serves for protection regulatory functions such as insulation, thermal regulation, excretion, and production of vitamin D. Please be aware that as we age, the layers of the epidermis and the muscle layers change, which cause um, us to be more aware of how we handle those blood draws. Skin is the largest organ of the body. It protects deep tissues, provides barrier to microorganisms and foreign bodies. It protects tissues from hazardous exposures. It prevents water loss and allows for precipitation, and it stores fat next to the tissues. It also allows for sensation like touch, temperature, pain, and pressure. The sebaceous glands produce oils for hair and skin protection, and the sweat glands produce precipitation to cool the body. Please be aware that some patients might 
lose the sensation of touch, temperature, pain, and pressure. So we need to be very much aware of this because the patient then may not be able to feel if we were to potentially hit a nerve, they may not feel that pain. Um, and also temperature regulation when we're warming a site. The patient has an issue regulating temperature, they may not feel if the temperature is too hot. Um, so keeping that in mind. Disorders of the, um, and I'm gonna abbreviate it to skin. Um, bacterial infection, so acne, and um, there can also be uh, debucutaneous ulcers, viral infections such as fever blisters or cold sores, rubio, rubella, chickenpox, and shingles are also some other common disorders of the skin. There's also fungal infections such as rainworm or athlete's foot, allergic reactions such as dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, insect bites, burns, skin cancers, and malignant melanoma. We need to be aware as phlebotomists of patients who have burns or allergic reactions to products we might use because in those circumstances, we have to change our approach to phlebotomy. Laboratory tests would include skin scrapings or biopsy specimens, bacteriological, viral, or fungal cultures, potassium hydrochloride, hydrochloride preparations, sorry, and biopsy staining procedures. The skeletal system, which covers our bones, cartilage, joints, ligaments, and tendons. Serves the body in five major ways. It provides support, protection for soft tissues, brain and lungs, movement and leverage, hematopoiesis, which is blood cell formation in the bone marrow, and mineral storage, calcium. There's different types of bones. There's the um, bones, the longer bones of the femur, tibia, and fibula in the leg. The arm and hand would be the humerus radius, ulna, and the phalanges. Short bones would be carpals, such as wrist and tarsals, and in the ankles. The different types of bones based on shape include flat, which is several of the cranial bones, ribs, and the scapula. Irregular cranial bones, which is the sphenoid and ephenoid, and the um, vertebral column, which would be the vertebrae, sacrum, and coccyx. Bones are connected to each other by a variety of joints that permit many movements. The structure differs between male and female skeletons, and they consist of several layers. Disorders of the skeletal system include inflammation conditions such as osteoarthritis, baritis, and gout, bacterial infections such as osteomyelitis, and porous bone conditions such as osteoporosis. These disorders would affect phlebotomy because it might change how the patient can extend out their arm. In addition, in the cases osteomyelitis can be caused by if we were to use a needle that was so long that it accidentally hit the bone, we can cause an infection of the bone. Um, please be aware that patients with gout, it is normally presented in the feet, but sometimes can be presented in other joints. And again, it could make the process of extending out a limb very painful. Disorders of the skeletal system include fractures, developmental conditions, giantitis, giantism and dwarfism, sclerosis, rickets, and tumors. Please be aware that these would obviously impact the patient's ability to make a fist potentially, um, sit in an upright position, and also could impact their just physical disposition prior to being drawn. Laboratory tests for the skeletal system include serum calcium, phosphate levels, uric acid, vitamin D, ALP levels, anti-nuclear antibodies, erythrocyte sedimentation rates, complete blood count, microbiological cultures or bone marrow, and microscopic or cytological analysis. This concludes Chapter 6, Part 1. 
Please view Chapter 6, Part 2 to continue with this lecture PowerPoint narration.